Um, so let's call the Finance Committee meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. on March 8th. Um, select board, do you want to call to order as well? I make a motion to open the select board meeting, Florida Health meeting. Thank you, Trevor. 5.04. Thanks, Carolyn. All right. Um, so updates from other meetings is the first item on the agenda. Um, the Frontier Regional School Committee meeting was last week. We sent out the link to that if anybody wanted to watch it. So they have voted a budget. Deerfield Elementary is tomorrow at 6 p.m. And Franklin Tech is tomorrow at 7 p.m. <coughs> the um, Deerfield Elementary I drafted, so they're asking for input, but I don't think we can actually go to the meeting, right? They just send you can, input you can in if you advance. want. Well, I can't, because I'm- yeah, Right, we're all gonna be here so, too, but- um, So- um, But that was a great letter. So I drafted a um, an email that I plan to send in since I can't be there to ask, which I sent out to everybody. Do anybody have any feedback on that? I can share it. Just that it was awesome. It was. Well done. Very nice. So, Julie, Julie, I just want to say that um, I, at some point as, as a town, we need to address uh, school choice, the impact of school choice. If, if we're, when we have so many school choice kids, uh, at Frontier or coming into Frontier or even at the elementary school, our percentage goes up, then what happens is you're sustaining classes, teachers for, you know, um, school choice versus just regular kids, our kids. And, you know, you have all these, you have healthcare costs, you have OPED costs that are not being funded. You know, this is, this will catch up with us. So, I would just like us all to send a letter from the town again to the legislative delegation saying that $5,000 per student is not appropriate. It hasn't changed since when they first started school choice. And then we really should hire someone to look at the impacts of sustainability of school choice in our system. I'm also interested in the number of students. Um, because my impression is that the number of students have been dropping and yet the budgets keep. Well, Whaley and Conway's percentage of school choices keeps going up. And, and then it's, and then the cost of frontier is divided by the towns based on the residents that go, you know, kids that go there. So our numbers and Sunderland's numbers seem to go up, but Conway and and Waitley with their school choice numbers, you know, sustaining their school, they automatically go over to Frontier, but that cost isn't being picked up, except by us in the end. Because <laughs> we have, you know, a little over, our, our percentage is going up of Frontier costs. Um, not this year. <laughs> no, but in, re, in relation to, you know, but yeah. kids. Okay. Um, back to the draft email to Deerfield Elementary. Um, does anybody have any input on that? Any recommended changes? I think you ought to write all of our letters. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. The one thing I changed is I added, since we got the Franklin Tech number, I added that Great. number in I was hoping um, because it's such an alarming number. Yeah. So I added that. Okay. Um, the other thing I drafted was the re the annual town report thing mm -hmm. from finance committee. That um, sounded great. I basically it. any yeah. input on that. Yeah, it okay. great too. Good. So we'll move on from that. Um, there was a, you know what, I'm going to save the CCI meeting until next week because I didn't get my mind around everything that was said. But there was a CCI meeting last week and it was just pretty much all the committees updating what they had going on. Um, and I'll bring that next week. Um, previous minutes. Oh, any other meetings like personnel board or anything? Should I go see? Okay. All right. Just previous so, minutes. Just so that everyone knows, capital improvement committee meeting is scheduled for after our meeting on two, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. It, it, it's actually be... during our meeting at 530. 
We moved up. So they'll be part of our meeting, apparently. <laughs> so next week, we're going to have the assessors at 645. We'll do Deerfield Elementary and Franklin Tech because they will have met and approved their budgets. And then we'll spend a bunch of time, I guess, talking about capital. Um, and this CIPC will be coming at 530. Um, and then the one thing that's still out there is a lot of the salaries. Um, you want to talk about that for a minute, Brenda? Or? Well, there there are a lot of budgets that are in flux at this point. Uh, salary budgets. Um, there's several contract negotiations going on with individuals. Um, plus, there's the police union contract that's being negotiated, the highway union contract that's being negotiated, and there still is a decision made on how we're going to operate the treasurer, collector, and the town clerk offices because we've decided to separate those mm -hmm. um, but that's going to take that that takes time to do so um, they're all kind of in flux at this point so I was told first of all I was told with the union contracts that we just needed to budget um, what we had last year so that's what I did except in the highway budget you'll see a slight increase and that was for the few people that are on the compensation plan so those two those three people I could figure their increases, but the rest of it, we're just level funding until we know what the final numbers are. Yeah, I, and, I'm waiting and, to hear. Yeah, and so um, Casey anticipated that these would set, be separate articles at town meeting for the amounts that would be funding those increases. Okay. That's what her anticipation is. That's about as much as I know. And just hmm. would like free cash? Yes. Mm. So we have to set some free cash aside for that. Okay. This negotiating of salaries is not new. The schools have been doing it. Yeah. My first time on the school committee was uh, 1977. You know what the date and is. there were plenty of times when the budgets or the salary schedules weren't finalized until after the summer. Right. And the they budgets, usually put in a percentage, you know, typically. They, yeah. And then so, if it's I mean, over or under. I don't see why we can't do that as well. Someplace along we the way, either. we'll have to learn to live with it. But. Right. And whatever's excess or less, we have to deal with that. Although I guess that's right, better than right doing now, all if, this. If we anticipate any kind of an increase, it's, it's putting it out there that maybe the contract is finalized or that it's been you know, that these are the numbers that, that are going to happen. And so, and so in the essence of preserving the process, mm. um, I've been told to, to budget them at, at what they were last year, level, level funding. Because the schools have a lot more obscurity, right, in their they budget do. when they do, when they do yes. a, uh, yeah. We used to, but I mean, the last few years that I was on the school committee in negotiations, we put in what we thought was a reasonable amount, if that was a 2%, a 3%, whatever it was, and that's what we put in the budget. If the budget ended up coming in at less than that, then right. hooray for the schools. If it came in at more than that, then the school then had to find some way of going through their budget and picking, you know, and finding places where they could make adjustments. But they have a lot more area to make those those adjustments well, in a other than the fact nine that you million think, dollar budget that, you know teachers and staff make up just like they do here 80 percent of your budget it's not yeah. it really is rocket science it's not easy but it's not rocket science yeah so the ones that are still under negotiation is the police the highway department the police chief and the town, the town administrator, administrator. Mm -hmm. those are it i think right i believe so so the decision for the like the town clerk stuff is still not here um so that's pretty much just somebody needs to decide right <laughs> so yeah, I th and i think as far as the town clerk goes um i plugged in an average of 30 hours a week um at like a step three in the grade that we anticipated that person to be in, mm -hmm. but that has to be a decision made by the personnel board. And 
select board. I don't, I don't know who, how, how that exactly happens, but um, so there was something plugged in, but whether that's what actually happens or not is another thing. Because we're splitting the positions, is that the right. idea? Right. Versus right. where it was all under one person before. Yeah. You know what? Let's save the rest of this discussion. Here are minutes, and then you can go, and then you can leave. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then we can meander on for another while, because I don't think we're going to talk about it. Yeah. So you want to talk about minutes? All right. I move that we accept the minutes from the meeting of March 1st. You have a comment? Do you want somebody else to move that minutes or? No. Okay. I just got a couple of questions, Jim. Um, yeah. At the bottom of the first page, it says budget has 25,000 for planning services from Pioneer Valley Planning. I don't see that on there. There is 25,000, but it just doesn't add it. No. On contracted services, I think there was 25,000 in there for grant writing MVP. Yeah, wasn't that going to be? And then there was. I read that to be incremental. And then there was a 10,000 10, for planning. Um, right. So wasn't that going to be handled by, if I misunderstood? That was Pioneer Valley Planning would be doing that service. That kind of well, that's service, who right? Jen had talked to about planning services. I don't know if it's if it's a done deal. It's but not, I don't think it's a done deal. Oh, okay, then I misunderstood. Yeah. She was speaking of it. I, I, miss, I understood yeah. it to be that they were the ones doing it. Oh, I can I do, think she's I can revise to do this that. And resubmit. And, we we want to just remove just from it. Pioneer Valley Planning. Just delete uh, the words from Pioneer Valley yeah. Planning. All right. Does that mute what you were talking about? I just, about? Uh, yeah. I, All right, okay. sure. Um, and I got another correction, I think. I okay. believe. Okay. So the budget adds 7,500 for Comcast? That's correct. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't add 7,500. It, it includes 7,500 oh. for Comcast, but that was just a $500 increase. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I saw that too, Jim, and I forgot to notify you that um, that Jim, I, I saw that as being correct. correct. Mm -hmm. So just change adds to includes. I could say includes. I guess that was what I was thinking of. That was under contracted services. Correct. All right, so we have a motion to amend. Oh, I see. Yes, the... increased by five. Right. Right. So, John, you made a motion to amend the minutes to remove so did, from okay. Pioneer Valley Planning. <laughs> I'm putting words in your mouth. Second. And says and change it from the budget <laughs> as to the bu budget includes 7,500 for Comcast broadband. Right. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, it was unanimous. All right. Okay. So I can look up the rules on remote meetings. And as long as we are all present, everybody on the board is present, we can vote just with hands. We don't oh, have great. to do the roll call. Oh, good. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Good to know. Okay. She's not here. What's that? Allison and Beth both have conflicts tonight and cannot be here. Oh, okay. So, so okay. Um, just the five of us. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. This is the board, and we're all here. Nobody's okay. remote. So right. okay. Okay. <laughs> so we can just raise our hand. Okay. I understand. All right. So um, we'll go ahead and go. Oh to wait a minute. We need to. So any oh. further discussion on the minutes? No. All those in favor? Amended. Amended. And okay. That's unanimous. Great. Beautiful. Now we're ready. Okay. So we're going to start with Council on Aging, and that's 541-5400. And that is set for $500, which it has been for the last couple of years. We haven't actually been, ex oh, go ahead. Is there yep. one that got handed out? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. So we, have, right. so we haven't actually spent any money out of this budget in the last Ever. couple of years. <laughs> for a while. Yeah. I mean, it's really there for, because the Council on Aging wasn't really But I thought we had again, we, we it, did so I thought there would be a cost. There was going to be, um, 
you know, money set aside so they could they could get together and start working and, and all. And I know we appointed and then COVID happened and nobody's met. Yeah. So, so it's it might there. be good so, to have, but yeah. whether you spend anything, if they need to at all, um, they really kind of re need, need to reconstitute again. And, You're right. Yeah. True. <laughs> True. Although it all adds up. Every little dollar counts. <laughs> all right. Any discussion? No. So it's been moved and seconded for 541-5400 at $500. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. That's unanimous. All right. So now we'll go to the senior center operations budget, so to speak, the one that um, <laughs> gets assessed to the three com, uh, the three uh, towns that are involved. Mm -hmm. And that's 541-5420. So that's another one that I handed out to you today. Mm -hmm. And from there, I'll let Jennifer, have all of you met Jennifer Remillard? Mm -hmm. Okay. A few times. Um, a few yeah. Mr. Pachurik, I don't, John, have we met before? Right. Mr. Presky? Right. I know Skip, Skip, and I know Jim and Julie, yeah. So. Okay, great. All right, um, I, I move that we, uh, Recommend um, sixty four thousand nine hundred ninety three for the senior center. Wait a second. All right. Okay. All right. I'll turn it over to Jennifer to um, talk about that then. Um, for further discussion on your motions. No, see, that's what no, we're ready yes. for you to <laughs> discuss. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Um, so you'll notice there's a couple uh, higher items that are have been added this year that haven't been added to previous budgets. One, Excuse me. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. one is I moved the outreach coordinator position uh, salary or you know uh, hourly income under this particular um, operating expense. The reason I did so is we were informed that the um, SIG grant, which is the Selective Incentive Grant, um, will now be overseen by the Mass Council on Aging. With that, there will be a gap in receiving that funding from the state. So um, I did that to alleviate any gap in payment for this particular salary, as well as um, under the advisement that this will now become a competitive grant. So it is not particularly um, guaranteed. However, based on you know my um, interactions with MCOA, you know, it doesn't seem like this grant will, t that particular grant will definitely go away. It's just more competitive than it had been in the past. Um, this position is really an, an important position, especially given with COVID-19. Um, a lot of outreach was conducted by um, previous outreach coordinator during that time to ensure that our senior community had access to all of the services and supports that they needed. It's also um, decreased isolation for seniors. Moving forward, you know, there could be a new variant um, which could potentially close our programming and increase the need for the outreach. While outreach would also be conducted by myself, this is a nominal position of 15 hours a week. It's not, there are no benefits associated with this particular position but it is an essential service. Um, so that is an increase here. Now, mind you, if we do receive the SIG grant, this fund, um, you know, this payroll could be moved and that grant could continue to pay that. But I want to ensure that there is gap coverage for funding that position. Yes. Yes. Currently, yes. Yes. That third person is this particular outreach coordinator position I'm speaking of. We are currently interviewing for that this coming Friday. Okay. We have, we have, we currently have funds available from fiscal year 22 SIG grant funds, which was, it's specifically for outreach only. So we are going to utilize the funds to pay for this position, but it only funds it through June 30, 22. Okay. So this would be for 23, because I, I would really like to, I really think this is an essential service position and hiring someone to um, come in 
you know, under the guise that they will be fully funded. I don't want to hire somebody and then be like, as of June 30th, we're letting you go, you know. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Yep. I just want to know where that person is. Hopefully we'll have an, uh, uh, we'll have someone on Friday chosen. Okay. So you don't have somebody right now then? Correct. No, we do not. Okay. That's what I want to know. Okay. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. So Murph, please, yeah, what, what is the grant? So the grant is one that you're basically waiting to find out if you're going to get? So we currently have for fiscal year 22, we have the SIG grant that is not presented in the budget for 23. The reason being is that particular grant, um, depending on how MCOA decides to handle the distribution of that, you know, it could become more competitive than it has in the past. And that's why I'm not putting it in here as a guarantee. And so this position that I've incorporated into the operations budget would normally be paid for by that grant. But I really think it's an essential service. So that's why I moved it under the operations budget to have it as a, con a you know, a continuous position. Because while uh, our program assist coordinator position is paid for by the state's formula fund grant. The formula fund grant, which is the 291 we'll move to after, um, is basically each community, so Deerfield, Waitley, and um, Sunderland receive $12 per senior, meaning the age of 60 and over. And if they don't have a certain threshold of seniors, to meet $6,000 annually, the state gives a minimum of $6,000. So that's how we're able to fund the programming uh, coordinator. So normally for all these other years, we brought three budgets. It, this budget is always confusing because it's always got three sheets and some stuff is on one sheet, some stuff is on the other. Um, this year with the SIG grant being up in the air, not really sure you know, when it's gonna come, there'll be a gap in that. Um, I think we felt it was more important to put it um, in, in this funded budget by all three towns. And then if we get the grant, obviously we can, you know, we yeah. can re and, move it back, but it's just unsure how that grant's going to happen this year. And, and also to elaborate, the SIG grant usually provides funding for up to around $13,000 or slightly thereover. So there would be a gap of around $2,000 to equal the 15, uh, 249. So you have the grant for this year. Yep. Yes. So we have. But you don't have a person right now. Right. right. No. So we're we have money for that. We're looking to fill that position so we can spend that grant money because it's specific for outreach only. When we lost the director just before that, we had also lost the outreach person. So we hadn't had anybody. And Sue was the only one kind of running the show right. yeah, and holding that. us okay. all up. So, so, so yeah. most likely for fiscal 22, we'll allocate, reallocate some of Sue's time to that grant because if we don't use it, it's gone. Right. Right. Um, so I know that Jennifer and Sue were going to look at that and figure out how mm -hmm. much yes. how much we can move over to that grant so that we can use up the maximum amount. Yeah. Um, so moving down, you'll also see a high item number uh, for the facilities lease agreement that incorporates an, a being a year at a, another location. And right now that's Holy Family Parish um, on Sugarloaf Street. Our lease right now is $1,000 a month. So I'm sure you have heard or, you know, um, there is a delay with getting the congregational church renovated um, from the time frame that was originally anticipated. Prior to the end of this fiscal year, we were hoping that Deerfield Academy would be able to begin renovations and have it completed, therefore only influencing our fiscal year 22 numbers. Unfortunately, between supplies, um, supply chain coming in and Deerfield Academy's uh, construction calendar for the year, they'll be unable to meet that deadline. So we're looking at a start date if they move forward um, September, October mm -hmm. timeframe. So that is what I incorporated 12 months of payments um, for a space because you cannot have a senior center without a location. Um, it's just not a doable situation. <laughs> so I budgeted for 12 months. Now, mind you, that could be reduced to only six, but I wanted to ensure that we had ac accurate coverage because if I come back 
asking for an additional $6,000, I'm sure that would not go over very well. So I wanted to put this up front and you know, present it um, and, and you know, hopefully understand. Without that $12,000, our budget ask would have only been up by $5,435. Um, so that increased it because of the lease space needed. Um, and to move throughout just a, an, um, an item that's been of discussion. So while I am not currently utilizing um, health insurance for the commute for the town insurance, we left the line item of the $5,100 in this particular place because unforeseen circumstances can occur. But we determined that we could reallocate this fund this $5,100 and put it towards the salary if needed, if I don't use the $5,100 for health insurance. So right now I don't have that need, but it's in there in case the need arose. But before the end of the fiscal year of 23, we could move numbers around or move funds around and put it towards the salary if need be. Mr. Presky? Um, the gas, electric, the utilities mm -hmm. related to the facility? Gas, electricity, water, sewer. Mm -hmm. So we're those still going to be paying for those, even though we paid rent. Are they billing us for that? So no, nope, we are not currently paying additional utilities for the parish hall. These are for the existing structure, for the existing yeah. oh, okay. building. Yep. So that funding, um, okay. we still have a lot of items in there for storage purposes, you know, refrigerator, and refrigerator and other items. Mm -hmm. And Sue still works out of there part time, as well as our life path. Uh, dining coordinator, um, Kathy Bednarski is in yeah, there as well. I, I was just thinking it might be for the church. Yeah, no, no. no we are very lucky. Um, you know, the parish has been gracious and hasn't charged any additional monies other than the lease agreement funding, which is the you know thousand mm. um, dollars. Do you have any other additional questions on the five four one budget? I could move over to the two nine one if you want to see that. Let's go ahead and any further discussion or questions on this item? No. So what we've been doing is going through and this is my view. We've been going through <laughs> and like making sure we understand everything in the budget and asking a bunch of questions and voting them and they're all passing, right? Um, but the budget's looking pretty bleak this year. So if we vote positive tonight, that doesn't necessarily mean we won't be coming back in a couple of weeks and revisiting it and mm -hmm. asking more questions. Sure. Um, put that caveat out there. Is there any other, anybody else have any questions on this item? Mm -hmm. I had a question for the swap team. Yes, sir. What is your big game plan now between the church, the old building, and you've got the rental down the street? So what's the game plan? What's the timeline? What are you doing over there? So the timeline right now, from, from what I said, and David's kind of managing this more than me, but I, but so what I understand is that um, we were hoping to have DA get started on the remodel for the con congregational church to get them, them going. We are going to get started on moving the stuff out. We've got to remove some, there's a lot of storage of all the health healthcare stuff from COVID in there. So we're going to move a lot of that out and get that ready for DA to get started. We're hoping they can get started early, but with with all that they do over the summer with the kids gone, they're thinking September is when they would get started um, and they would do the do the handicap um, bathrooms and get it accessible and redo the kitchen a bit um, to have it a space usable. Um, you know, hopefully that'll get done in a couple of months and we can get in there, you know, quicker. When will you be in there, any idea? I, I don't want to give a date now, but I would say, I, I'm hoping by Christmas, if they if they can get rolling. Yeah, and then uh, a little less than a year, and then, um, and really, I guess the plan through CCI and, and, and all, everybody kind of looking at this and, is to uh, remodel, to, to ask for funds to do a design to remodel the existing senior center into a town hall with an addition for um, 
for us a, a new community center, which the seniors could use and the community could use, and then we'd have storage and meeting spaces. And it's a large plan and it's ambitious, but you know, for long-term planning, that's that's kind of where we're at. We're hoping to be out of the church's hair as soon as possible, but super grateful for the space that they've given us. It is a nice space. They have a great kitchen and nice open place to, um, you know, to just do some some program in the meantime while the while the winter's been cold and hopefully you know with the t we'd like to get a tent again in the in as soon as the weather opens up nice and uh do some outdoor programming exercise different things like that again you have a tent in here yep i actually already reserved it with hilltown tents they're going to yes. come in and put it in uh mid-may but not charge us until we uh, start we they we had requested for june um so they're giving us a few weeks ahead of time because they want to get it in ground early to alleviate stress on their setup piece okay, but so um, the game plan is to have that tent be the functional part of the senior center for four, five, six months. So my goal actually is to have both facilities utilized. So still using the programming space at the church, as well as outdoor activities here, because um, as several community members have shared with me, um, some seniors and in our community are not comfortable going to a religious location. Yeah. So we wanted to ensure that there was um, welcoming neutral. neutral location and a lot of people also enjoyed the outdoor space so mm -hmm. my goal is to um, increase programming where we have some outdoor art activities art programmings birding other incorporated pieces where that can be done outdoor spaces on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays where I'll run programming and Monday Wednesday Friday we'll have our um, you know our exercise programming and other additional things that we've been continuously doing um, at the at the parish location, so we would like to have both spaces, um, and that's why there's a, a miscellaneous expense for four thousand dollars in here that covers the cost of the tent, that covers a couple other pieces, um, you know, of unforeseen items. Um, I am working on other grants, but as you know, grants are competitive and they're not guaranteed. So in order to meet our minimal programming um, needs. That is, you know, that that was my goal with, with this particular budget. Yeah. Did you see Carolyn ask her hand? No, I didn't. Go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, I just wanted to um, reiterate that we're going to keep an eye on the senior center. Um, we have some limited PCR testing happening, and um, Alex did clean the um, senior center with vinegar and then Clorox. So we're gonna see what the mold situation is. And that also might be make the building more available in the better weather. Problem is once you get in the summer and you have to have air conditioning uh, because of high humidity, we're, we're not really sure what the mold condition will be there, John. But the idea is um, we're gonna monitor it and then you know, hopefully get money to, towards um, architectural review uh, and design of that building for a town hall. And we're asking for an earmark um, for the community, you know, community senior center addition, because the elevator would go out on the outside of the grammar school, and then you'd have the community center attached. So, you know, that the timeline is in a couple of years, you know, this will happen. Wait, so the idea is now to have a community center addition to the existing former elementary school building that is currently the senior center. Where does that leave the Congregational Church building then? Um, well, we're going to be using it um, until this is done. And then we don't know what the use of the Congregational Church will be going forward. People have talked about assisted living, not senior housing, but assisted senior um, housing, but, uh, you know, we haven't explored that yet, Jim. The renovations in the church will be, in the congregational church will just be, um, the reading area will be spaced, sectioned off to incorporate the town nurses station or room as well as the offices for the senior center um, staff. And then we'll have the kitchen and then they'll refinish the flooring um, in the auditorium area, do renovations to walls, ceilings, et cetera. 
the main section of the church where the pews and such are are not is not going to be um, done anything going to be done with so we'll have the main uh, parts to the building over there to accessible to us including a lot of storage space as well that's the former elementary school building the congregational, congregational church. church yeah that's yeah. where those renovations so i think the trouble is we got two churches yes yep. i know <laughs> three two buildings i understand it, it can be very complicated because you know yep. when you're describing this amongst the community they're like where yeah you know where are we going and stuff and and while i know it's a vision a long-term vision for all of these pieces that are looked at um you know this community the senior community has gone without for a very long time and um you know it's important that we fund a location that's welcoming inviting it's open it's clean it's functional and a, we've increased membership we've um we've increased membership i just started on 31 january and we've already probably got a, about 15 to 20 new members in that time frame and mm -hmm. i'm calling data in order to get the metrics for um you know, when we went indoors in November is when we started utilizing the, the parish hall. So um, by offering different programming and increasing the visibility, I think we'll be able to expand and, you know, gain um, additional membership, which will make it a viable um, program that's essential to the community. So do you have a feel for about how many people come, I don't know what, per month or something? <laughs> um, so we probably get an average um, tomorrow, for example, we have our uh, partnership with the Franklin Area Survival Center. Um, it helps to improve food security for the senior population. We get approximately 72 people who come to the center just for that alone. While they're there, they socialize, they have some refreshments that are provided. Um, you know, so and then we, our most popular programming right now has been the exercise program through a grant with the YMCA. We probably average 15 people per class, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings from 9 to 945. Um, I would say overall, we probably provide supports and services to at least three, 300 a month to 500, depending. We also have grab and go, which sometimes they're not necessarily coming inside the building, but they're accessing services that we provide support with. Through our, you know, through our um, partnership with Life Path, Life Path um, doesn't have another area location for distribution within Deerfield, so we provide supports for a lot of communities, um, you know, within our region, um, and it's pretty accessible too for some services related to Hampshire County. We get people, you know, who may come up for some some sporadic events that we have. We're offering. Um, this month, for example, we're offering a technology day. We're offering free tax preparation um, to seniors. We're also offering um, a presentation. We had a cooking for one, maintaining healthy habits. You know, we did that last Friday. We also have a um, through the Northwestern District Attorney's Office are doing a, a savvy consumer presentation um, this month to help prevent seniors from succumbing to scams and other particular things. Mm -hmm. So by having a, a really good space, we're able to host in-person events like that. Um, so <clears throat> that's um, key. I think, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy also to come present in front of the Finance Committee in six months to kind of give you an idea as to where we are with numbers and increasing, um, you know, membership. Um, I think, you know, unfortunately, some of the data, as you know, Sue Corey was the only person running the program for, you know, for the last six, seven, six, seven months almost. And, you know, she has paper data, but we're culling all the data through it. We're combing through, getting it and try to have accurate information. Um, but the problem is then she's one person and couldn't do everything herself. So, you know, she made sure that the program was successful in the ways that it needed to be. <coughs> but I can come back in six months to provide that, um, that information. I have no problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to see, it's um, you know, we've already increased membership, you know, since I started and we, at the meet and greet, we had over, well over a hundred people last week. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had senior members who haven't been there in a very long time. We've, we've started attracting, you know, new 
new segment population. And I hope that increases. I haven't seen, you know, I have seen um, Mr. Pachorek. I haven't seen the two of you um, yet. We're, we're not. We're not old enough yet. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen Jack there a few times. We're the two of you. You have a program. Use it. There's no membership cost either. Yeah. One I, point that I'd like to make. Yes. There are different programs from different towns. One time I went to Hatfield because they had a polka band there. Oh. And it worked out very well. And they, when I went in there, they said, do you want to become a member? I said, I don't know. So they signed me up anyway, whether I wanted it or not. Okay. But the bottom line is they told me that the town clerk over there gives them a list of everybody over, I think 60, mm -hmm. every year, and they automatically put them in as members. Oh, interesting. So it's something you may want to check into with uh -huh. the Hatfield Senior Center Director and mm -hmm. ask her how they control their membership and how they get their numbers, because that will help your numbers and your numbers help the funding Ransom, that you get from the state. For sure. Well, what actually <laughs> provides the funding information from the state is our census data. Yeah. Now we have been functioning on our formula fund grant on data from 2010. Yeah. For fiscal year 23, we will finally get the census data from 2020. Now our senior population, which is considered 60 and over for that data from the um, Office of Elder Affairs is, is, has increased. Now I can get the census data from our three town clerks that provides, you know, that we provide support for, but the, t the state bases their numbers on the census data. Mm -hmm. So they're basing it on 2010 data. Yeah. Now, maybe you were, maybe someone was 50 10 years ago, right. you know, so th they're just now being counted or someone might've been, you know, 59. And then they yeah. started accessing services a year later. They haven't been counted for the past nine years. So. Great. All right. Any Thank further you. discussion? On this? <laughs> Just to clarify, right. go, go on there. The funding for this. There is funding for this. Funding for which? Well, so, we're not on that one. We're yet. on five four one, which is the operating budget first. That, that's just the three towns. Yep. That, that's yep. Fine. yep. No, I, yep. I, I the other one is the state. Right. That's that, the one we That's just the about. formula fund. So you actually don't vote on that. You, it's it's for your in, informational purposes really only yeah so so this is also to give you an idea as to what funds i moved around so you will see the expenditures reduced from the operations budget i moved a lot of things over to the formula fund um, and that was so i could offset the cost of my payroll for that particular position Any other questions on this one? Yeah, so it has been moved and seconded for 541-5420 at $64,993. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. All right, 291. 291 is a grant, uh, grant uh, budget, so I believe is, Brenda indicated you don't have to vote on it. It was for your information to provide uh, details. So this this particular budget provides the salary for Sue Corey, which is who is currently our program uh, coordinator. It also has a variety of different things. We'll, we will be going forward with a marketing um, aspect this year to a drive for membership. And I moved some of the other expenditures that might have been included on um, 541 over here. Um, we are going to, in case anyone has questions, we're moving to having cell phones for all three positions to alleviate um, the unavailability of our staff to our senior community right now because they're not reaching a person typically in the office. They're reaching our voicemails, which we have to then call them back. So we're looking to become more accessible. Um, we are exercise programs. There's only a small fund amount here because we do get Title III grant monies um, to go towards that through Life Path. Um, and that opens up in April and usually comes into our coffers in July, but that offsets um, any additional monies that the town would have to pay. There's, it's not in this budget at all because it's monies that we would set aside later um, through the grants. So there's no additional cost. 
to the community. And you, you currently have a Fred Wells health grant as yep. well that they're using for the exercise programs as well. For, yeah. for the fiscal year 22, there was a COVID uh, grant that was given by the Fred Wells uh, Trust out of Greenfield for $4,600, I believe. Um, we've been utilizing that uh, moving forward to pay. That'll help us get through the end of our fiscal year 22 in order to have uh, continual exercise programs. We're also just an FYI to plug this in for you. We're going to be going forward with a, a mass walk challenge through the MCOA. Um, we're going to be promoting walking amongst our seniors and try to partner with uh, the elementary schools, the regular school or, or frontier regional high school, as well as the recreational departments of all three communities um, to try to you know, bring more um, to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time. Great job. Thank you. Have a great night. What would you like to do next? Oh, gosh. Let's see. Let's do um, education. What we have, which is just frontier. Right, so we basically, the only budget that has been given to us as a final budget is Frontier. So we have um, three budget sheets for that, which I handed out to you um, when you came in today. And that's 310 5400 to start with. Okay, we have a motion. Make a motion approved to get it for discussion. Make a motion to approve Frontier Regional School budget account 310-5400 for four million one hundred four hundred seventy-five dollars. Second, four million one hundred thousand four seventy-five. Sorry, second that anyway. <laughs> um, this number by itself isn't their total budget, so actually, um, two pages behind that, their transportation budget. If you add the two budgets together, because trans transportation went down quite a bit, mm -hmm. you'll see that their overall budget uh, went up only forty thousand five hundred dollars, something like just that. Point nine eight percent. percent. Of course, is Deerfield still paying forty seven point three percent? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure that yeah, I was going to say that changes. Pardon? Changes usually within a percent or so. so yeah. Okay. So it's, it's fairly it's accurate. On, it's based on the five-year average. Five-year rolling, rolling average of students. Yeah. That's around that. Yeah. So what happens is this year, the kids didn't go to Frontier. They went to Franklin County Tech. The Franklin County Tech budget went way up. So we got off cheap here. But we're going to oh, pay man. for it there. Yeah, you are. Right. Remember that? You taught me that when you were the chairman. Take, take it from one pocket to the other. That's right. So, so do we want to vote on this one? Yeah, I've got some questions on the thing. <coughs> I, I so had I, a, it makes sense since this, since this one's on the floor. I had a couple of questions about the actual school budget itself. I was looking through it and um, I take it they've added a special one or two special ed positions because that budget went up by like, you know, like 100,000 special ed salary. Well, I, do you know, Trevor? Well, there's been a, um, I can't speak to it exactly, but I do know that a lot of the um, adjustments that were made to salaries were in that area of um of the education there, there you, a lot of it had to do with the ias as well the ias have been really um working really hard and and it can be in challenging positions so i think that during some of the negotiations there were some columns made to kind of recognize that quality that amount of work and, and the type of work that was happening so you had you know, you have an IA that might be just in a room helping a teacher, and then you have an IA that's kind of a one-on-one -on -one with a 
with a, a you know challenging um, just because of the needs of the child. Um, yeah, and then there are other other groups that are a lot more. Right. So it's under classroom teachers. It's the third one down. Salary sped teachers. Yeah. Um, it's gone up by ninety one county, whatever. I know that they had. I'm surprised at that because it. <clears throat> they had some costs that had reduced quite a bit because they had some children that were, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one and very, ex you know, expensive care that had kind of aged out of the school. So I'm, I'm surprised to see that number high. I wouldn't be able to answer that. Uh, Darius what would they have to... said at the meeting was that um, they originally asked for three new positions, a building monitor, a faculty position, and an IA. And that put them at like a five point something or other increase. And so they came back in March and took out the building monitor and the faculty and they left one IA. So there is one additional IA and that's based on the sixth graders, the incoming seventh yeah. graders, the whatever. Yeah. And I know that they've been, that faculty that they wanted was an English teacher. They really have a need for an English teacher, but um, they have a lot of other teachers that are kind of like, filling in and that kind of thing that aren't specifically an English teacher, but um, that's one area that I know that they were hoping to have, but m must not have come through the process. So, but yeah, good question on that. I don't know what it's been. I thought that was going to decrease. Just curious about the numbers. Um, the budget that was emailed is total of 12 million 237,000 plus dollars. Mm -hmm. If I take 47% of that, it comes out to 35,000. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, the, it, the number's not adding up. It might be. Which is a good thing. No, a lot of it is, um, you know, funded by grants. So it could be just our portion of what they, what they assess the towns. And then a lot of the other budget is funded by grant. I'm not sure if that goes in the opposite way yeah, of your question. You, you've got to take uh, chapter 70 money first and they tell you and then there's a minimum contribution each town has mm -hmm. and then they add some other figures and then they add some other figures and then they add whatever percentage you have based on students so it's a several like four or five different factors that go into that 50 percent yeah i think yeah the, the grants like title one grants and all that kind of stuff kind of there, there should be some place there was an email from the school. And if you look at the columns up there, it's the very bottom, the last page, it does indicate where the money's from. So this is the um, thing that they oh. handed out at their No, I saw it. No, I. Oh, okay. Yeah, 48, 149 percent. No, no, no. I, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're right. Matter of so fact, they broke that down in one of the school budgets. I don't know if it was Frontier or the elementary school. <coughs> no, it was broken down for Frontier because Frontier had all the four towns broken down. And it was like a four yeah, or five state. Right yeah, that's it right there. State required contribution, Frontier Regional School operating expenses, transportation, and then the assessment. And then they got the that's figure right. in there for the rolling it's, average it's, of, uh, but those don't match these numbers either. So, so you gotta follow is... the whole logical sequence and he gave you all the numbers in the sequence to tell you what it was in each one of them. And when you add it all up, we're still paying about 48, 49%. So that is this budget and the transportation budget together. Together, yes. So 315.5800 plus this one takes us out to about $40,000. Well, they managed to keep the increase. They managed to keep the increase low, which is nice. Um, that's a, a fact of the number of kids that we had. Yeah. No, I was going to say we they lost um, nine of our kids, right? That went to ended up going to Franklin. Yeah. 
and every year one or two of the four towns always gets hit real bad. Yeah. And this year it's I think Conway and Whiteley. Their total increase not divided out by towns. Do you know what that was? I don't remember. So it's 3.64 percent. Yeah. Right. The overall budget increase. For that's right. Total general fund budget of 12 million. I'm glad it's that low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We'll be crying the blues when we talk about Frank's fund check. We will. I would be happier, frankly, if they were closer to two and a half percent overall. And then I kind of feel like they should shoot for two and a half percent and then the number of kid fluctuations thing that we just have to deal with. That's, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. But if they were aiming for two and a half percent instead of three and a half percent. Yeah. They wouldn't even need them. Not that okay. they're very important anyway. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Nope. Now it has been moved and seconded for 210 for 400 at 4,100,475 dollars. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? We have abstention, that's 401. No. no. So we're all here. I just wondered if that meant that we all have to abstain. No, okay. just that we're all here. We're all right. Do you want to just go to the transportation number sure, now? Since, transportation. since we talked about that, that's 315 5800. I make a motion to approve Frontier Regional Transportation Budget Count 315 315800 for $79,511. Second. Well, can I ask, what, what is it? This includes <coughs> elementary school transportation. I I believe it does at least a portion of it. I'm not sure how much of it because the elementary school still pays some transportation costs. I couldn't tell you. I've never seen it go down like that. Drop, Maybe we should wait to see the elementary school budget. <clears throat> see what's on that for transportation. Well, it, it, it shouldn't be. It should all be within the frontier budget. Yeah. Well, I, I know at one point in time they had moved most of it into the frontier budget because of the um, the money that they would get back from the state <coughs> for transportation. <coughs> that it was better to have it in, in right. at least right. It, that was the way I understood yeah, they it. They get more money back from the state. Right. Maybe that isn't the case anymore. I, I don't know. I don't know those. I'm not privy to those answers. So <laughs> unfortunately, there's no breakdown of where, where these numbers come from. Trevor? Right. The uh, question about the transportation budget. Yeah. Is, does that budget still include trans transportation for the elementary school? Was there anything that happened? Well, I thought there's th those are two separate numbers, aren't they? <coughs> I'm almost positive they're two separate ago, numbers. They moved money into the frontier budget to right. cover because they cover that, yeah. Yes. You reimburse state reimbursement for that. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do we want to ask that question of the before we vote this? No. No. If they're going down, I'll vote it. <laughs> 
Well, but if it's just an administrative, you know, be all in one. fiction and it's, it's going to come back in the elementary school. Because you're going to deliver, you know, but I mean, but if it is, we were wondering why. why. No, of course, it's, so it's got to be set because wouldn't Sunderland pay for their own transportation for their school and Waitley pay for their school? And then it seems like that. Yeah. I, it seems like that, doesn't it? I almost it says so. Deerfield pays a percentage on the budget. Well, that suggests yeah. that it's for us. Pardon? That suggests that it's frontier only. So, well, it's the whole transfer, the whole thing. But what I mean is, you know, we have a share in frontier, whereas each of these towns has their own yeah, elementary school. Yeah, but the calculation shows for us. Right. So. Which suggests that this calculation is for frontier only. Okay, it's the same for the This would be in March. I should think it would depend on where the students live. But there's yeah, still like one bus for the Yeah, they are separate. Yeah, this is a 2016 budget, but it um, it does have transportation. 2015 you have this is a, this is a 2016 book that i just yeah, grabbed i think it was after that when they moved it to the high school oh you think they consolidated at some yes. point in, oh, in okay. 2000, i thought it was in 2020 because you'll see our portion of that went from 70,000 to 162,000 and i thought their reason for that was that they had pulled the transportation into i think that you're budget. right right this looks suspiciously like it has been disentangled again because well, the, the numbers look more does. like the right. pre 2020 numbers. Correct. Right. I suppose that's a question that should be asked at the hearing tomorrow night for DEF. Yeah. Maybe we should defer voting on it. Or we could vote. No, oh, if it went down, I'm going to vote for it. You vote for it. Yeah, but what if it says, what if you look at the school, the height, the elementary school budget? And it shows ninety thousand dollars of transportation. Then so they got to put there for elementary school. Hmm? Where did it say this is frontier school? And okay, it's not as if we can. Well, I mean, the transportation budget is pretty much based on how many kids are going to which school, and so it's not like it's anything that we could we could suggest being cut back. <laughs> In fact, right. isn't it statutory? Mm -hmm. Move the okay. question. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. And abstention. Four, zero, one. All right. So the Deerfield Elementary meeting is tomorrow night at six. I'm going to send an email since I can't be at the meeting. Is anybody going to that meeting? No. Uh, is that, no. What is it going to be? I think it's virtual only. That's a problem. Yeah. And then um, the, what's the other one? Franklin Tech is tomorrow at seven. Even though I was looking at that budget earlier today, I mean, our assessment goes way up because of the number of kids you have there. But their total, like you add up all their assessment that goes to the town, it's only like a 1.3% increase. Um, so. They're always reasonable. I always found them to be reasonable. We don't like the number of kids that go there at times, but that you just got to suck it up and accept the fact. It's good to pull. It is good. What's the account number? We don't have it yet. Oh, because, okay. Um, Sorry. Because they haven't pulled it yet. Sorry, okay. So we'll, we'll talk right. about that next time. So. All right. Um, so what do we have next? Frontier um, Regional Capital. The Capital. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I forgot that one. Let's do that one. So that's 310 5800. Make a motion to approve Frontier Regional Capital Budget Account 310 5800. $1,385. Second. All right. Any discussion? Oh. Um, you know, this is just the um, interest on that, right? And so, you know, the, 
just one, you know, not that we want to be spending more money, but just the, the dollar amounts are going to just rise fast. And I was, we had been talking about on the capital committee over there about um, because rates are so low, let's, you know, start moving on some of this stuff. But um, anyways, we'll I'll leave it where it is. I just want to mention it was just, just on the, the interest on one, on that one borrowing, but we haven't really touched any of the work, the and, track or any of that stuff. And this is the borrowing that we debt excluded. Right. Because right? yep. that's what the way I handled yeah. it. Yeah. This is, we still got to pay for the track and all that stuff. So not that this is a year that we have tons of money to spread around <laughs> and put towards this stuff, but it's coming. Um, and at, as of 20, it was still all, it was like 200,000 in transportation. So maybe it was after 20, they changed it. All right, sorry. Any further discussion? All right, it's been moved and seconded for 310 5800 at 1385 dollars. All those in favor? All right, that's unanimous. All right, if you see your city of education, you can't just vote because we haven't done it yet. Can't do second or move. We, we do have Smith Don't vote. We have Smith vote? It, okay. to, at least preliminarily, um, we know that there's two students there right now. We anticipate that they will continue. Uh, there are no new requests yet at this point for a third or fourth student, but they've got till April 1st to, to uh, make that request, right? I believe so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do we have... We, no, there's, budget, there isn't percent. a budget sheet for that. It's okay. just on our summary. So it would be on the fourth page of that summary. under other special warrant articles. Um, so Casey did hear back from them and both, both students uh, together. It's going to be close to 41,000. We don't, we don't actually have what their budget is for next year. We have what the costs are for this fiscal year. And so we planned for that and built in a little bit of an increase, like a couple thousand dollars because we didn't know what else to do. So if you look, you'll see the tuition we plugged in at 41,000. Mm -hmm. uh, the Smith Folk transportation, you know, we had gotten a quote from um, Gribco for this fiscal year at 225. I just yeah. threw in an extra thousand dollars. Will that cover it? I don't know, but at least we'll have a budget. Can I ask you how old students are? <coughs> uh, one is in 10th grade and one is in 11th, right? I'm pretty I sure. Don't, yeah, I'm not sure. So we, we will have, so one will be a senior next year. <coughs> Somebody always asks that they're in the, uh, in the program that we don't have, right? Yeah. Typically, yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that we usually check on, right? <laughs> yeah, so so this number could change, but for right now, this is what we have. We don't have right, it's 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 in right. There's no <laughs> there's no sheet for this. We've never had it's one. It's a warrant article. Yeah. You guys are looking at something. Yeah, uh, on the main uh, on the main sheet. Is on the, on your page four. Yeah, page, yeah, page oh, four. Look at page four. All right. Well. Um, All right. Here we go. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. It's okay. okay. That we recommend. Look the about seven or eight of, lines down. But, okay. I move that we recommend the expenditure of forty-one thousand for Chapter Seven Four Smith vocational tuition. Second. Any discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all right, that's unanimous. <clears throat> Some schools, towns, whatever, negotiate with parents to do the transportation hmm. or expense to be far less I think that was pursued last year. I thought okay. that um, Casey had made that. Oh, I don't know. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's in, in the back of my mind. That's what I'm remembering. But checking again, maybe. 
see if they can carpool kind of thing. Do, would, do we pay them for the transportation, which is less? Got it. And it might be less money. We're talking about the right. transportation for uh, the Smith folk students and Skip was suggesting that uh, sometimes we negotiate or sometimes the towns negotiate with the parents to do the transportation for those students. And so it would cost a lot less than um, contracting with Gripco. It could, but the town's required to provide that transportation, no matter how we do it. Typically, you have space on a bus. Um, in this case, that's what we've done. We've contracted for specific space on a bus, but parents don't have to take that deal, Skip. Right. They but can we, force us to continue to provide the busing. Right. And frankly, it may not be cheaper at this point. I thought I remembered that you had pursued that last year and the parents weren't interested, but I... It right, and if the parents aren't interested, it's a dead question. Well, yeah, but if but if they might be interested, I guess we could just ask. You can, but then we have to have an agreement. We have to settle on an amount, and with the fluctuation in petrol right now, I don't know that we could settle on an amount, and it has to be convenient for them. Yep. All right. But we will never know if we don't ask. That is true. So I guess my question is, where do I put this in my priorities list? Because this is this is an investigation. I've done this before. I know how long it takes. That's not to be because I have other priorities that I need to pursue right now. I'm working on capital as you guys are talking. So we don't have to decide that tonight. Moving on. <laughs> I, I can drop it? them off. Yeah. Nobody's I'm always down. going down that okay, road. Why don't we skip over it? I'm going back and forth every day. I can bring them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll move that we uh, recommend the amount of 23500 for transport to Smith location. All right. Do we have a second? I will second that. We moved and seconded for twenty three thousand five hundred for Smith Vote transportation. So now we can have the discussion we just had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other discussion beyond what we already talked about? All right. All those in favor? One, two. In favor, all those opposed. You opposed. You can steam. Two to one. Well, that means it does not pass. So that means it does not pass. Because you've got to have 50% of the people um, available for vote. Yeah. You need at least three votes. So That's what right. what are we gonna do? Yeah. yeah. We vote it later. We'll revisit it next week. Well, this is the recommendation. That's called job security. You always got to have something to work on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uphill both ways. How many students are we talking about? Two. Two students. Okay. Good chunk of money. Buy a motorcycle for that. Bike. I know. <laughs> couple yeah, couple, couple mopeds. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, what's next? Smith Boat, we did. Tri Town Beach, we don't have. Um, OPEB? Where, where are we on Tri Town Beach, by the way? I don't know. I, I think I'm they've kidding. failed to be able to post meetings, so they haven't been able to meet, from oh, what really? I understand, right? I don't know. I have not heard. I thought they had talked about. Kind of get, get to the team again, and they were meeting and stuff. But I, well, the question is, what have they done for this year that they're they've already voted money from last year for this year? Have they done anything with it? Nothing. Uh, there was a small amount spent at the beginning of the year just for insurance. So they haven't done nothing other than letting the peace take over. Pretty much. 
I, I know. Um, Who's dinners for everybody? Uh, I know that they have some plans and they're working on those plans to, to take care of the problem. And, and also Casey had mentioned that, um, that uh, they were intending to be open from Memorial Day to Labor Day and on the weekends on those shoulder parts until the school was out and then it would be full time. So they were intending to be open a longer period of time, but how I, that's about as much as I know. Casey, do you know any more than I do as far as that goes? Well, so they were trying to have a meeting so they could discuss both the maintenance issues up there with regards to the pond itself and a consideration to open for a longer period of time. But part of that discussion would have included how they deal with handling the gate and lifeguards. So Ken and I haven't had a chance to circle back around because he's they because they ran into the problem with posting a meeting. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, thank you. <laughs> so did you want to go to OPEP? Let's do OPEP. Okay. So OPEP should be the very last sheet in your book. Under tab nine. Go uh, down. Tab 12, twelve. Under other warrant articles. It goes down. Because our insurance costs were a little less last no. year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, that, um, that I think I, I'm I'm surmising because the school had some retirements and people that they didn't replace that our total insurance costs went down a little bit. So um, and that was okay. So um, so yes. So fiscal year twenty one expenditures is what we use for fiscal year 23 contributions. So that was fiscal year 21. Yeah. I know I looked at the numbers several times just to be sure. We may have. And it's 4%? 4% of the total insurance costs. Yeah. So that would include all of the costs, um, including um, stems, wastewater treatment, you know, all, all of our insurance costs. And then our indirect costs allocate out to the senior center mm -hmm. and to wastewater and to stems their portion of, of their four percent what does OPEB stand for other, uh, other post retirement benefits employment I think. benefits, employment yeah. benefits. Mm -hmm. so it's non-pension benefits mainly health care yeah correct basically for health insurance health and life uh, but Weird. life okay. is nothing compared to the health portion of it we have a motion. We have a second. A second. Any further discussion? When are we going to have another seminar which tells us what our true OPEP costs are? I think there's a, there's a um, this year they have to do the Gatsby again, right? Two years. Gatsby Correct. 45, yeah. So Correct. I'd love to try and get while they do that or somebody to come and help speak to us all again about. See, last time you, I thought the OPEP cost, the true cost was nine to eleven percent, something like that. And I don't know if that's accurate. Or yeah, not. I know our liability is like nine million or something. Nine right? or eleven million? I I can't remember. It's always it, a moving um, target for yeah. sure. But we just got the financial statements. I we should. Did you get a chance to look at them? Less every day. I think it's pretty close to ten million. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe just real quick discussion. We won't stop. That will go on a long time. But um, maybe we adjust our policy um, that it's either four percent or at least what we spent the year before. <laughs> so we're not going backwards. I mean, it's probably rare that our insurance you goes mean down. The but, or the two? Yeah. Was that yeah the greater of the two? Yeah. <clears throat> it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Right now, it's not a huge difference. No, and it's just not enough money. I don't know. I'm not as stressed about it as you guys are. You I'm, aren't? Oh, you know, man. We'll get to it eventually. Like well, we'll I, pay off the pension, and at that point, we'll start paying this off. There's no mandate yet. There's um, the delta is like, huge, though. The whole world is like, oh my goodness, healthcare is going to drown us all. So either there's going to be a solution, 
Yeah. Or the whole world's going to drown, in which case we'll just drown alone in the ocean. <laughs> True. It is. It's just, uh, my worry is that is that it's that delta as we care for all a lot of the baby boomers, our generation, there's just not enough of us to, mm. to start that number just get bigger and bigger and bigger and we have less of us doing it. But yeah, like you said, we'll all drown together. Yeah. Any other discussion on this one? No? Okay, it's been moved and seconded for OPEB at 39,760. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed, some against the whole OPEB thing. Okay. They don't ask us to fund bonds. Why are they doing this? Two zero. So you're, in your opinion, we shouldn't spend anything on this. This is I'm, just I'm against the whole account. It's just an accounting. <laughs> so do you think we should be spending more, or do you think? So no, I don't think no, 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 no. My concern is this, right. <laughs> and it's very simple. And I've been saying the same thing for years. When you have tri-town organizations. And if our true cost is going up $100,000 a year, and you're putting in $40,000, what you're doing is saying, I'm accepting $60,000 liability for the town in the future. Mm -hmm. That's my objection to it. It's very simple. Yeah. We should be getting, and if we can't collect the money from the three towns, when you have three town organizations, like the senior center and SCEM, mm -hmm then we accept the liability. I'm against it because we're accepting at least yeah. 60,000 liability. And what do we get? We get $60,000 in funds mm -hmm. and we're saying, oh, we're even? Right. That's a phony excuse. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but that's that's the way I feel. So just, just for this year, we spent 90,000 for the school and 87,000 for the town for retirees. That's part of the insurance. And that came out of the current budget. Mm -hmm. Town budget, current budget, 170,000. So we're funding it as we go. That's, That's right. But right. but eventually the whole deal, John, is that we won't be able to afford to fund it as we go because there'll right. be so many more people collecting it and a lot less of us and a lot less of a budget to fund it. I don't know. It seems like we hire more and more people. <laughs> Which I know, I know. No, no, no. It's not a concern that we can pay for it. What we're being told is this is truly an expense that we have right now. So we've got people who are working for us on insurance and or, or who, who have health insurance who are going to retire and. You know they're going to be entitled to insurance, and it's that entitlement that we're being told we need to fund now, mm -hmm. which is the same as the pension. We need to fund the pension <coughs> now. Well, it's just we're kicking the can down the, the road. It's not fair to the future of the towns, people, taxpayers, that we didn't make some effort. It's just like not having a maintenance account. It's not have you know funding pensions. You can't you can't let it build up so so much that it bankrupts the community. When can we start spending it to use against people that are retired? Anytime you want. Then we'll let you then let's spend it. We're only putting in forty thousand. You can't pay one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Not going to cover much. <laughs> All right. I don't have, have a problem with all that. I have a problem with only the three town coalitions were. We're giving up, we're accepting the liability and we're not gonna get paid in the future. Right. They're not gonna pay us two years, three years, five years, 15 years down the line. We're accepting yep. that $60,000 liability right now. That's my only concern. That's true. In the SCEMS budget, there is an OPEB payment. It's the same, it's the same percentage. It's a 4% that we vote. That's not right. We're accepting sixty thousand dollar liability minimum. Yeah, but John, you can't doing all the work for the for scams. You're saying we're charging a sixty thousand dollar admin fee, so you're really doing it for nothing. That's John, the four percent is the four percent that we are doing as a town. You can't That's ask them. But I'm talking about three town units. I'm talking about scams where you Sorry. have three towns that are funding that. Three towns can't afford that. 
Whereas you're saying, we don't want to fund it because we don't have, we're just going to accept the liability and imagine that it's not there. Well, All it right. is there. Let's move on. We're going to move on to the next item. You asked me for my opinion. Button. I thought I'd give it to you. <laughs> we Thank got you. it. We, we got it. it. <laughs> yes. I just want, I want it to be clear, Julie, that we have the same percentage. We agreed on the same percentage as a town for, and SCEMS can't have a different percentage. Yes, they can. Check with a lawyer and you'll find out that they can. We already did, John. All right, All right. we're moving I'd on. I'd like to see we that in writing. On. We are moving on. What's next? Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> um, need a gavel. Need a gavel. <laughs> I do. Get you a gavel. Miscellaneous. <laughs> What are we Mis doing? Miscellaneous budgets. Let's start with the very first one, the moderator. It's 114 5100. All right. We have a motion by Board No, I just think so I didn't go home because she was asking me to set out. Make a motion we approve moderator budget account 114 5100 for $400. All right. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. Next. Okay, so the next one is the Finance Committee, 131-5400. Okay. Where's our stipend? Where's our salary? Yes. Do you ever actually get a check? Where does this money come? <laughs> okay, do we have a The question? assessors have it. I'll, I'll move the uh, Finance Committee uh, expense to $500. Okay, second. Second. Third. Discussion. Um, what is this? Training. We also are yeah, a member. We have dues. Association of Town Finance Committees. Right. But if you wanted to go to um, Finance Committee training, this would pay for that too. We've there's, done there's that. A, there's an annual meeting that they have. There is. And, and it is not that good. It is. I went to it this year virtually. And it, right. It's not showing up, but you guys paid for it. We did in, in fiscal year 22, right? Yep. Yeah, because it, it won't show up until we finish the year. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what do they do? They, uh, there's the, they have a finance committee handbook um, and then they do training. We talked about all sorts of stuff. You'd think I'd remember. Yeah, there's some, about, there some, typically there's several a seminars. Number of seminars. Last time they had it in still. Franklin, Mass., 100 miles from there, right off uh, Route 495 at a school. What the, is this the municipal finance officers one? No, they, they have an annual meeting. Last one I went to was in Franklin, Mass., and that's like, uh, I, just, I don't know, they changed the numbers on it. I went to one of those municipal finance officers. Lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good Is that stuff. The same one. Well, I don't know, but I know that we had. Uh, I'll bet we had two hundred people at the one I went to. Yeah, it was probably Yeah, it was good. It is good. When is this normally held? <laughs> oh. October. Anyway, and, and you can go on. because you're eligible. You should. Yep, it's good stuff. It's been moved and seconded for 131.5400 at $500. All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. All right, the very next one, accountant expense, 135-5400. I'll move. Uh, this has just gone up uh, to correspond with the increase in the audit fees. That's Cameron's fee? Is that what that That's is? That's correct. Any discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. So let's go to 155-5800, which is the PEG access capital. What is it again? What's the number again? 155-5800. This one is mandated by their contract. So we get the money um, in the previous year 
And so then, so we received 4,000 in fiscal year 22. So we have to allocate it to them um, in fiscal year 23. Make a motion we approve big excess capital account 155, 5,800, $4,000. Second. What does PEG stand for? Public. Public uh, education fund. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> so, it's so the, it's it's for the FCAT. Yeah, FCAT. It's getting public access. You know, public so, education. So, the capital yeah, should be used for you know cameras, yeah, we and did, sound systems. Didn't we do all these systems? We did this? do yeah, some of this did. last year. We we spent okay. four thousand out yeah. of here for that. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> and this rolls over right this it does yes yeah. it does. how much is in there i want to say there's like sixty thousand. and what can we use it for any uh, well when when somebody puts together the needs and i without chris i don't know who's running uh, john's running it now john, john is, is the executive okay. director now yeah um, i mean we, again we got all the speakers the mixer the that's all the mics I don't know if they, yeah. <laughs> I have a spare runner at the house I could bring in. Uh, they currently have 63,000 and change available to them. I think that contract runs out at the end of October. I'm not positive, but I'm thinking that this is the end of that. Oh, from Comcast? Because um, I know they one, were two, three, four. Oh, maybe there's a fifth they year were in there. Arguing like that, the, the government was going to take that money away, right? Is that the one you're talking about? I can't remember. I know the Comcast was lobbying the, that they didn't have to pay for that anymore. There was plenty of access for people, so they didn't want to didn't want to pay anybody. I know Chris was fighting hard against that, but I don't know if whatever happened. Didn't pass. It didn't pass, Trevor. It didn't pass. Thank Comcast. you. Let me know. Thank you. It didn't pass. Good. They are difficult to deal with. And that's an understatement. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if I look at the next page where explain this out, we give we give Comcast seventy five hundred dollars for something. And then we fund peg access or FCAP using eighty thousand. Right. And then we get this up to four thousand. That's because it's in a contract where you get so much money each year per capital. For capital items. So capital is putting in new speakers or new uh, television sets or new cameras or whatever. And that's the one where we have. And that's mandated by the contract. That's why it's a separate. It's item. a per per prescriber contract. multiplier. <laughs> it's an amount per prescriber. So it changes a little bit every year. Which contract? Comcast contract plus the seventy five hundred that we pay Comcast. No, that's, a, that's completely. That's separate. a that's a separate thing, totally. And, and Comcast does and this. What do we get for this four thousand dollars? Well, right now nothing. It it has to be spent by FCAT. Okay, so we're for capital into, items. We're putting it into their yeah. capital fund. But they have have they been spending it? I mean, if they haven't been. Again, I, I, Chris had a hard time. All this stuff um, was like what, wrapping his six mind grand. around the things that we needed, and I think maybe if we gave some more direction to the things that that we need here, maybe that would be spent better. I, I don't that's know why we got these, and I think the next step is some mobile cameras. You know, we have a couple of cameras, and we could talk to John when he when he's here, but um, you know, have a better camera system so that we could. You, you could do one of those owl things. We do have a, a, a guy coming in to look at audio and visual stuff in here as well. So that those Did we use it to pay for something like that. The, the TV. Yeah. We, we did use it to, I think, to pay for part of that. I think Casey will maybe speak to that or maybe oh, she has hi, another Casey. question. Yeah. I can actually. So we contacted Wasman, which is an AV company that works on with very big groups like UMass and ask them to come in and give us an idea of what we could do to sort of help with our current issues. But I think it may be useful to get them to maybe assist FCAT to help us to make this more functional in terms of taping. Because one of the things I noticed in Waitley is they have a setup that really is pretty automated and with very few 
very little movement. They've got everything set up a certain way and it stays that way in their main meeting room. So they have the ability to very quickly position themselves to have a meeting. And I think that's one thing that we've experienced, especially with hybrid. And so Wasman did a complete hybrid setup for them on purpose. But long term, we need to think about what's functioning and what's not, because some of those cameras are not functioning. And if we have mobile cameras, would that make it easier for us to actually give people access so they could hear? Microphones is another issue. And how long is this building going to remain in use? Right. That's the, that's the key. It's like, do we wait before we finish out another building, use that money there? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to invest too much in this building. Any other, Any other discussion about this item? It has been moved and seconded for PEG Access Capital, 155,500 at $4,000. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 500. Okay, the next uh, miscellaneous budget is 171-5400, and that is the Conservation Commission. Motion. Make a motion. We approve Conservation Commission account one seventy one fifty four hundred thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion. Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. The next one is Zoning Board one seventy six dash fifty four hundred. Board. Actually, you know what? How about planning board? Did about you mention that? Commission. What's that? We already did them. Oh, we did the open space. Yep. Commission. Yeah, we did that with the select board budgets. So, I uh, we didn't originally have planning board on that list. Is uh, that okay? Do we need to wait then? Okay. So um, we've gone back and forth with this one, but because, and, and I think Annalie pointed this out when we were looking at contracted services, is when we put a planner, a contract for a planner into the contracted services budget, we took out that portion of the, of the, the planning board budget because that person used to be used just by the planning board and by putting it into contracted services, now that person will assist all the land use uh, committees that we have. So um, this budget just reflects um, expenses for um, operations and for training. And it has increased from what we had anticipated for training and, and operational services in the past, but that's because the planning board has some training that they would like to go to. So we've set that at $2,000. Mm -hmm. so we have no motion. All right, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Well, I just had. Well, any further discussion? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Five zero zero. Uh, so the next one is the zoning board one seventy six dash fifty four hundred. Make a motion to approve Zoning Board of Appeals account one seventy six fifty four hundred two thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion? No. Nope. The, there's one question. We only voted a thousand dollars what this year? Right. Are we overspent? I no. Um, in it, you know, it, every year is going to be different. It depends on how many mailings they have to do. They don't have like a revolving fund that they can, you know, take money in and pay out of for this kind of thing. So, so they get stuck. Um, if I were to look, let me just take a quick look and I'll let you know. Um, Twenty twenty one, they expended sixteen thirty eight. Yeah, right now they've only spent a dollar, but that's going to change Heaven because now. I know that I know that uh, postage bills just came out. So um, you might have a busy spring too. Yeah. That's that's what and they're yeah. expecting that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Adam 
said, instead of us always having to ask for money to cover this, why don't we just set it at $2,000? So that was the request. So what do we have a reserve fund for? Well, is it the free cash, right? Yeah. What? Is that every question? Well, if you're you're anticipating an increase, right? Well, yeah, well, I, th I think I think it's the now. nature of our business these days that things that that we're going to have higher costs for this kind of a a, a, a committee, and um, Adam is just being being proactive in that. Like you said, if if they didn't spend it all, it's going to go back to free cash. But instead of having to come and ask for five hundred bucks or seven hundred bucks or whatever, this just covers it. I'm curious, it seems like there's a, an alternating year cycle of high and low. Is something driving that? Is there some biennial thing that happens that- I don't think so. It? I don't know, can you, uh, the select board, do you wanna speak to that? I don't think so. I think it's generally um, just the job, you know, whatever's in front of them. They get a lot of you know, different development stuff. You know, Dollar General was, was a really heavy, heavy year. There's um, a lot of mailings involved with that. Mm. It, generally because things don't go quick it's two if you have like a dollar general it's like a two-year cycle it goes into two budget years that's why it seems like it's it, something we can yeah. anticipate right it's kind of hard to yeah it's hard to you tell can't you can't really anticipate i just think with the with the amount of entities that have come to town and hope to come to town i just think they're going to be busy for and it seems to me as we the changes we made in Planning. I think we're going to keep them out of town. Planning board and uh, zoning board, uh, zoning bylaws. Do we really expect a whole lot from the zoning board of appeals? Well, if you go based on tradition, it's low every other year. That means this year should be coming low, and that means next year will be high. We passed the zoning bylaws that changed it, so there's not much that's going to be going to the ZBA any longer. Hmm. See? That's true. That is true. So why don't we cut it to 500? <laughs> that's true. We still have that. That's still out to for a decision. <laughs> well, there's still a discussion whether the attorney general is going to accept some of the bylaws. Yeah. Any further discussion? Well, I mean, we could move an amendment if you want. He said no. <laughs> <Must work. laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Nope. It's been moved and seconded for ZBA at 2000. 2000. All those in favor? All those opposed? 410, that passes. So the next one is 182 5400, and that is the energy committee. And they are asking for level funding. There's a motion to approve energy committee account 182 5400 for 1,000 bucks. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Next. So then how about 291-5400, which did we already do that one? Oh, we did do that one. That's done. Yep, that one's done. So um, 543-5400. We did inspections department. We did do inspections. That was our first meeting on uh, February 8th. What's that? Sorry. I didn't write anything on that page. I'm oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't either. I on was that, distracted. So. Where are we? The Veterans District Assessment. So that's 543 5400. So move. 543. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, we have no control over this. This was um, the budget that they gave us. Um, it's nice. It went down a teeny bit. All right, any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? It's unanimous. 
So then how about the rec director's salary, 634-5110? Have we done veterans benefits? Um, we did, that was with uh, the town clerk, treasurer, collector budgets. I didn't write that down either. No. We did do it, didn't we? I, I don't know if we did veterans benefits. Um, Oh, we didn't. No. No, nope, let's do that one. What's that? Which one? Uh, that's benefit. 543 5410. Yes. I move that we expend 21,000 on uh, account 543 5410. I'll second that. We haven't, um, in 2021, we didn't spend that full amount, but I can tell you that today we received an adjustment for cost of living for the, the, um, the individuals that we're paying. So I'm guessing that we'll probably use that $21,000 budget next year. How does it work? Um, I don't exactly know, but we get these assessments from the veterans district that tell us who to pay and how much. But they, so do, they go to apply for no. something. Hmm? They go up to the district to apply for something. Say you get a veteran that comes into town. He has no money. He needs a place to stay. They may put him up at Motel 6. Then he needs money for food. So they authorize an expenditure for food. What happens is that money is given out. We turn around and pay whatever the benefit is, and we get 75% back from the state the following year. In our, in our cherry sheet. On a cherry sheet. Yeah. Now, I thought it was 75% also, but Sarah thought she read today it was only 50%. Maybe they changed it. It used to be okay. 75. I don't know if it's 50. Yeah. Thank you. Money well spent. Yep. Well, we take care of veterans, and that's one of the jobs, and that's what they've got to determine how much, and they tell us what we got to pay, and we just pay it. Uh -huh. And we can run high or we can run low. I'm assuming that this is an older system because you know having towns do it rather than just being a federal bureaucracy sounds like something left over from the Civil War. This is yeah. a state law that's yeah. authorized under state expenditures, so each town is responsible for it, and we have to belong. We don't have to belong to a veterans district, but it's cheaper if you are. We used to have two veterans districts in Franklin County. We belonged to a smaller one, then we got swallowed up by Greenfield. So now we're all one district in Franklin County. But still a good deal for the veterans and good deal for, for us. Any further discussion? Nope. All right, it's been moved and seconded for veterans benefits at 21,000. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Now let's go to the rec director's salary, 634-5110. Motion? No move. Yes. Step two? That's, yeah. That's, I, I believe um, she went up a grade. No, grade right? three, step 10. Grade three. So now E is maybe she went up two, two grades. Well, I can't remember, but two. this is according to the compensation plan that we voted last spring. Grade E, step two. Well, is step, back step, back two. step one or step two? In, As in some cases, that. a lot of cases, people ended up on step one or step two. Um, a lot of times because they, they jumped a grade. Um, oh, okay. Be because we eliminated the first three steps of the original of, of right. the fiscal 22. Yeah. So. Yeah, so on our on our current compensation plan, the recreation director is on grade E. It used to be a grade three. All right, any further discussion? No. Nope. Who moved this? Uh, yeah, skip seconded. 
Okay, so it's been moved and seconded at $53,167. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, it was. All right, um, let's go to 691-5400, which is the historical commission. And again, 691-5400, it's the very next page. Yeah. I'll move. Second. Yeah, you see here that he's asking for a level funded budget. Um, I know they always have intentions to do things. Um, they've got plans. Sometimes they don't happen. And I think during COVID, it was a little harder for them mm -hmm. to accomplish some of that work. We're so. Yeah. When's the walking tour? I'd like to go. Um, what they what they've done is they've um, inventoried all the houses up and down North Main Street. So it's a walking tour of South Deerfield. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it's Sugarloaf Street or not, but it's definitely North Main Street. And it's a historic description of all the houses and it's, it's a self walking tour, but oh, um, it's actually really wonderful. <laughs> uh, it's in draft form as far as I know though. Yeah. yeah, I know he was working on getting it published. I have a copy, he must have. But there's no expenses right. for this year, so, so to speak. So I have a copy of that. It's, it's been printed up. And, and I think they had some on the table out front or something. Okay. Walking tours of South Deerfield. Sounds the shape of the I know we're going to have it ready for the 350th. That's their intention. Hmm. I didn't know there was a diner on North Main. That little house right by oh, the oh, newer building by Bloody Brook. You have a diner apparently at one point. Huh. Yeah, a, I don't remember that. Where was it? Um, it's right by the the uh, the farm stand on North mm -hmm. Main. It's this little modern building with a big chimney. Kind of out of place in the rest of the town, and it's like you look at it, it's like, oh yeah, that was probably the commercial building. <laughs> I remember a lot of things, like for example, if you go past the second driveway there, Frontier School, the next place or second place used to be a candy store. So I can remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember a diner on North Main Street. So this is on the east side. I remember the south of the. I'm not old enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion? Yeah, it's been moved and seconded for historical commission at $1,125. All those in favor? That's unanimous. The very next one is the Veterans Memorial Day expense. That's 692-5800. Six, six Second. All right, any discussion? No, nope. it's about what's been spent. There's Every year they spend yeah. pretty much the entire amount. The amount. It's for it's for flags, water for the people that are doing the parade, food. But they didn't do it during COVID. No, but they no, but they did, but do, they the, did do some. All the, they still, they still did all the flags like that, and they still yeah. Yeah. Out. they brought the bands out. I mean, I'm not against it. It's no, no. Race. I think yeah. they, I think yeah. they still yeah. more. Reefs. They did a very nice they tribute, from more. what I understand. Yeah. 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 That's why it's all. John does it. John Sis does an amazing job, and they don't care anymore. I, I don't. I don't foresee any issues this year. Yep. I don't foresee any issues this year. We should be oh, able to have the parade. Yeah, I talked to John a little while ago. I'm pretty excited about that. Great. It'll be great. Usually, mar nice. usually marching it right in your uniform. And Jack does oh, too. Oh, I'd like to yep. see that. Yeah, it looks. She looks great. All right. Any discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Um, let's do the reserve fund, which should be in your tab 12, 132-5400. I'll move. Um, the only thing I was going to ask is, do you feel, still feel comfortable with this amount of money? We, there's so much, you know, so much happens during the year. And I'm just wondering if we should just up it just at least... 25,000 or something, just because 
it's it's so hard to anticipate all the things that happen during the year and we're trying to be as careful as possible with our budgets so there's no there's no extra fluff in the budgets hopefully by the time we get done our budgeting and i just i just feel like it's important to have the ability to come to the reserve fund for unanticipated things thank you for asking for that but i don't think we need it our expenditures for 2017 was 47,000. Next year was 29,000. Next year was 47, 20, 61. We're still 40,000 over. I don't think we need it. I, I think because we have the ability to transfer between appropriations yeah. that eliminates the, the dire need for something mm -hmm. bigger than that, Carolyn, I, that's my personal opinion, but I, I guess I just I just feel it's so unsettling now. I mean, there's so many things happening all the time that it just isn't as stable as it used to be in in our budgeting process. That's all. Do we have an idea of what 2022's reserve fund? I, I believe we for? spent forty six thousand so yeah. far. Does that sound right? That's um, about so right. Much right off the bat. Yeah, we, it was. We did. It was. I, and I'm actually going to come to the next meeting with a request to, um, we have to pay down a certain portion of the Oxford loan before mm -hmm. we renew it, even though we'll eventually pay it all off. Um, it's a very small amount, like $12,800. So I was mm -hmm. gonna come with that to the next meeting, so. Um, so you will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that we can do, Carolyn, uh, at least at this point in time, yeah, we spent 46000 so we, far. If we needed to, and there's money available, and in the April town meeting, we could put more money into the reserve fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. We actually got right. to the point where we were down, to, where at this point we had right. spent 97000 or something. Have an eye on it by the meeting. Oh, or, use, yeah. or use free cash for those items that we need yeah. at the town meeting, which, which we're doing, like, Snow and ice will be on yep. this town meeting uh, to come out of free cash. So will the July seventeenth storm. Right. Okay, I just I just wanted to bring up that it is really just so difficult to anticipate so many things now. Right, and I, and I tried Carolyn, to, that's because we're cheap. We don't <laughs> want to spend the money. It's not true. I tried to take five hundred bucks out a little while ago, and you said no. Yeah. Just leave it in there. <laughs> we got the reserve fund we can use. No, I know. <laughs> well. But you, but it just there's so many things that aren't anticipated now. It's just craziness, I think. I agree that it's crazy, but let's keep it the same. Okay. Yeah, crazy. Fine. Uh, Blame me if we go over. John concerns about his topic. Yeah. Yeah. I know we can go to town meeting and stuff, but it just seems I, it, it, it's a pain in the neck and then it costs money to do a town meeting too. So whatever, just mm -hmm. keep it in the back of your mind though, still, okay? Yep. All right, any further discussion at this meeting? It's been moved and seconded for reserve fund at $100,000. All those in favor? All right, on that list, we also have the Dickinson Library. Now that isn't on a sheet. It's gonna be on your, um, your summary expenditures on page four. Right under scams. What's that? Right under scams. Right. Yep. Um, so that money is the interest that we earned last year. And if I remember right, Sarah and I figured out it was on a calendar year, calendar year basis. I can't remember, but we did get the interest, the exact interest that we earned, and it gets allocated um, through this budget to the Tilton Library at 85% and the Frontier Library at 15%. So that's a separate article on town meeting floor. Do you want a motion on that? Yes, please. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Is there, there any way we could not what? spend this money? That, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the history on it, I can tell you that too. So it's a Dickinson Library Trust for 2709, right? Yep. yep. Correct. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. 
Um, it seems like I thought of something else that wasn't on this list. Well, there's one we just printed out, right? What was that? Earth uh, God Core Assessment. Oh, yeah. right. So that would be a miscellaneous budget, and Four that um, is 830 5400. Yep. It's an assessment, nothing we can do about it. Correct. This is an assessment from FERCOG for the services that they provide. Do we get our money through? Yes. Yeah, that they do a lot of bidding for, like for example, gasoline and salt yeah. and sand and stuff like that. By partaking in those things, Black we save money <laughs> without us having to go and do all the work. There, there is a cost to us through the highway budget yeah. for for that as well. Yeah. But yes. But it's good. On top of that, it looks like the funding is basically sort of rebounding to the pre twenty twenty two levels anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We do. Yeah. First for assessment account 830, 5400 for 45,091. Move it. Second. They had no increase last year, I think. But it went down last year. Yeah. They went down. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So most of this is simply rebounding. Yep. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> they're, they're talking well I was just going to say there's one other miscellaneous budget that we could vote if we wanted to and that would be for the 350th celebration no budget sheet for that once again it's on your page four of your summary there's been a request uh, for the last $10,000 do they need it um, um, Carolyn could speak to that. Yes, we will need it. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, the fundraising uh, committee, Friends of Deerfield, is raising, um, seeming to be on track raising money. So we'll be able to do um, our 350th with well over a $100,000 budget as anticipated. You can have it or you can have the mosquito money, one of the two. <laughs> show up as part of the um, capital, right? Does it show up on the capital? Which one? No, we don't have, a, uh, Julie, the cake was actually given to us for a dollar. So $1,000 right. slush fund. Yeah. yeah. But it's well this, worth it. This is to cover the parade costs, fire, fireworks, um, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Do we have a motion? So move. A second. It's a slush fund that's actually going to provide slushies this time. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, okay. Before. All right. That was unanimous, right? Zero zero. Even though we won't be spending this again until are we done with our two hour meeting or we got more yeah. we don't have to worry about it yes i think we're, I think we're done kind of all right oh, are we past the weekend mm -hmm. we yeah are. It, right. up to you is what i i know you yeah, kind of wanted else to, you want to do tonight what's that yeah, well i was thinking else? you wanted to talk about franklin tech maybe you don't um i don't know if there's anything else really that not really so next week we will do Deerfield Elementary, Franklin Tech, um, Assessors, Capital. And then we're going to have to just step back and look at where we are. Can, can you give me the little discussion that we had before this meeting started about where you are and what you have plugged in here? And <laughs> sure. So I also handed out a new revenue sheet, revenue detail sheet. Um, I got a little more aggressive with the local receipts, brought them up a little bit more. Um, I reduced what we would hold back on free cash to 250,000 from 300,000 to give us the revenues that you'll see on that sheet. I can't remember, 17 million something. Um, 
if you were to incorporate our budget as it is today into those revenues, you'd have $55,000 left. And we uh -huh. still haven't signed contracts with the unions or the two um, individual contracts. Um, and there's no capital. I was just going to say capital. The reason why we're coming next week for capital is because we have way too many requests. Yeah, and, and we have no money for any of it unless we were to use ARPA funds in the fall. <laughs> so, or unless we reduce budgets. So, um, so that's where we stand today. Um, th where... There is one capital item that's in that summary sheet and only because it's gonna be a separate article and that's from Frontier for 31,000. So that's the only capital item right now that's in that summary sheet that I've given you. And that's with level budget, level funding on the police and the highway salaries, mm. both of which we really expect to go up. Yes. Okay. And, and yes, correct. And on that cheery note, while we're on way back to school. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 a scary outlook at, at this point. You, you um, mentioned frontier capital. Did you say the number was there? Thirteen eighty-five or something like that. I thought you just said thirty-one thousand. So, okay, so they have a separate capital request. So the thirteen eighty-five was just for the million eight hundred thousand that we had voted uh, way back in two thousand and nineteen or something like that um, that we had debt excluded. The $31,000 is for a walk-in cooler that they need to replace. So that's our portion of the cost. At Frontier? At Frontier. Okay. And we haven't voted yet. Right. right. I just plugged it in because I knew that it was gonna be a separate article and I wanted to make sure I wasn't losing track of everything. That'll Something. show up in the capital discussion mm -hmm. next week. Is that right? a walk-in cooler or a freezer? I thought it was a walk-in cooler, but yeah, it says walk-in cooler. Walk cooler. It does. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, normally, okay. when you get an item like that, you don't have to replace something except for the condenser on the inside and something on the outside, and that's it. And that shouldn't be thirty-one thousand dollars. Well, and Unless that's just our that's just our share of it because this one's dusty or something. I don't know. Five years old. That's it's a new one. That don't make any difference well, if I, it's I if it's a refrigerator or a freezer. You shouldn't have to do anything other than replace the interior unit or the exterior unit. And that's it. And maybe the control. They don't like the control. That's why I said maybe the control. Well, that's the next week. Yeah, so so it'll be a joint meeting with CIPC at five. Well, their portion of it will start at five thirty, right? Next. Yep. Next week. And then at quarter to seven, the assessors will be here. So we've got just an hour and 20 and 15 minutes to talk about um, capital. So well, it's just, it, it it's, seems like it's really important for all of us to get together and discuss what we're gonna do. Cause it's just, it's the requests are overwhelming for, you know, the uh, funding which is available, which is almost zero funding. So we have to figure out some kind of strategy or what we want to do. So it makes sense to have a joint meeting to talk about it. That's all. So we just, I guess I, I got, got a notice email, I thought earlier today, saying that the capital improvement committee was meeting at uh, five, five, five thirty. Well, it originally said 6.30 because they yeah. thought they were going to meet with us at 6.30 and I said it couldn't happen because the assessors were going to be here at quarter to seven. So I asked if they would move it to earlier and Mark apparently agreed to that. So. And what, you know, we could, at this point, Carolyn, you throw in your two cents over here and I can tell you too, we just really haven't done anything. We all well, quest, but I don't think we... I don't remember talking about anything. Well, I, I, Skip, John, uh, Mark was just looking for some, you know, he, he wanted direction. And I, and I said, well, it's, it's, there just isn't any money. Uh, so it's going to be hard to prioritize. So it made sense if just so we all have a joint meeting so we can try to um, be creative on how we want to handle this. Yeah, 
and have some kind of strategy between us. It makes no sense for, for the CIPC to be off by itself and do business as usual and then come with a presentation and it's like, well, sorry, we aren't gonna do it. So I think it's worth having some discussion. And if we need to go back as a committee, then it, it makes sense. But I, I think all the select board and the finance committee and the CIPC should be together and just say, well, what are we gonna do? What do we wanna do on this? In, in talking, the highway department was there at the last meeting and I, I had to leave early come late. But I talked with Chris later and he would like the uh, mini excavator for 100,000 bucks, asphalt, sideway, sidewalk repair for a couple hundred thousand, town commons rehab for 350,000, Leary lot for half a million. Uh, let's see, 59,000 for a wood chipper and $10,000 for building an HVAC software. Can we get a copy of that list to all the finance committee members before the meeting so that we can- Oh, Julie, that's a very good idea. Casey, could you could you make sure the finance committee has the copy? Of the, and of the what? Capital spreadsheet, if we could- It's not it. done yet. I'm actually working on it while you guys are talking because right. there's some revisions that Mark and I discussed yesterday. And so I need to revise the applications as well. I mentioned it to Julie offline earlier. Yeah, and they're, I think they're just looking gets for done. sometime before the meeting next week. That's my intent to try, but I got a lot of, a lot of other um, balls on the radar screen or targets, let's call them targets. I like targets better. We don't have them, there's no sense in meeting. That's basically what it boils down to. I mean, we can share, well, if, if Casey can't get us an updated one, we'll make sure everybody has the one that we have right now. Okay. Uh, we can certainly screen share what I have once I'm there. I'm, I have two things left to do, and then I want to send it to Mark for him to review it. Great. Casey, make sure that Dave and Trevor have a copy too. This is a discussion item for tomorrow, so you're going to get a draft copy that because I need to ask for a change from you guys okay. on one item. Okay. All right. Great. Um, I move we adjourn. I'll second. second. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? This is a good meeting today. <laughs> you went through a lot of stuff. Didn't we you? did. Very good meeting. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Make a, make a motion to adjourn our select board meeting. I will second that. Carolyn? All those in flavor? Or in favor? <laughs> I'm in flavor. <laughs> he's, waiting flavor. For, he's waiting for that glass of wine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Carolyn. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. <laughs>